Thank you for coming, everyone, to hear, listen to Jasmine talk through this exhibition and the genesis of the show and um, the way she works and how she fits it all in. She's an incredibly busy lady, but she manages to pull together this exhibition, which is such a beautiful, comprehensive and diverse show. Um, you may or may not know, Jasmine's got a um, studio down uh, in Factory 21, which is uh, out a studio complex down on the corner of the street here. And I think most of this work was completed down there, wasn't it, Jasmine? Yeah, well, I've got, um, I've got two studios. So I live in, I live in Hamilton, which is uh, three, three hours from here almost. And so I've got a studio at home there and why, the way I kind of work is er, things that um, fit in my car, the go I do in Hamilton, and then the larger works um, I do in, in the studio up here. Because of the cost of shipping is just, um, it it's just adds so much, like it's just so expensive. Um, so that's one of the reasons why I have literally now worked between the two studios. Um, for the shipping and also uh, when I'm here uh, working here I have um, it's like a residency I'm like I'm away from my normal life so I'm here for a couple of days a week um, and, and and I get a lot done like in three days here I get a week's worth of work done so that's why I have the balance of I've got also I've got um, so I've got five children and so the older two the older two live up here in Geelong and um, and so I stay with them, you know, when I'm up here. So I have family here, which is the other, you know, it helps balance the, the bigger picture of things. But in, I just literally, um, the tyranny of distance is, is always um, something I continually face. I have made it, I make these thought catchers into sculpts, big steel sculptures. And um, there's one that's due to be somewhere and the, um, the fabricator hadn't finished the final um, bit by Friday. And so now tomorrow for Mother's Day, I'm hiring a truck to take it to myself to meet the truck. So it gets on the truck to the Gold Coast. So like, I feel like, um, you know, it's not something I ever complain about and it's just, you know, the way things are. And there's, you know, um, but that the tyranny of distance is always, um, adding an extra element of um, challenge to everything I do, living, living really I mean, regionally. There's probably a lot of um, you know, things that we could jump from one thing to the next, but it's <laughs> interesting because yeah. your work is so ordered and structured. Yeah. Is that yeah. how your life is? Because it has to be that way to manage what you're saying with the balance between the pool of your well, artistic... Well, I really have like... Oh, the girls are laughing. I know, I've got my daughter here in the audience <laughs> who's laughing. but. I am very structured in a very unstructured way. Organized chaos. I have organised <laughs> chaos. I do. Um, I've got to obviously have a certain amount of um, structure to to complete, do the work and live the life I do. Um, and I have had people say that before um, that the controlling the surface and everything being precise and tight is is kind of you know I don't know something I it is something I can control. Mm. And I mean, even the whole theme of painting a perfect world is part of it is about that, like is making the things you can't, you know, I, in an ideal, say in an ideal world, the, this painting over here is called Sit Me By The Fountain Of Youth. So in an ideal world, we wouldn't get old, you know, there'd be, you'd be, there'd be, a, there'd be a, something you can do to control that, you know, like you wouldn't die, you'd be here forever. And so the little blue circles represent these, you know, life. And so the one, the structure that's sitting there has caught one. So they're, they're not, they're gonna be here forever. So the work is full of um, metaphor and um, this painting, which is painting a perfect world is kind of like a utopian, beautiful, you know, it's, it's, it's a little perfect controlled world. Uh, this one here is uh, called Open the Gates. And so in a perfect world, we'd have no gatekeepers. And so, you know, every, all the paintings have that underlying theme of a problem being solved or how, you know, in a perfect world, you know, you wouldn't have I issues. So I'd rather focus, or think about this perfect world. So the digital artwork is also, um, if you haven't looked at it, it's, um, the wind turbine, it's basically in a perfect world, aesthetic things and practical things 
would be the same. And, and hopefully, like, if, you know, thinking well ahead into the future, some of these ideas could actually be made. So the, the wind turbine is also very beautiful and a piece of art. And, you know, why can't we, in going in the future, combine art, practicality, technology? So that, that digital work is really just kind of capturing that other idealistic thing, which is... And so, I mean, the whole exhibition, I wanted people to come in and feel like while they were here, they were like in the little perfect world, you know, like with the, the installations and the, the large works, which are very immersive. Um, yeah, so, it, you know, rather than, just, you know, the, the body of work over one painting can be so much more powerful. Um, yeah. yeah. And you have the, re the repeated um, imagery and 3D pieces of the thought catches and the yeah. portals. Do you want yeah. to just explain a little yeah, bit about, about yeah, the so, symbolism or yeah, meaning? So, I mean, I, so I've been painting and doing these things for a really long time and it's just been so kind of great now that some of the ideas are strong enough now that they stand on their own. So for example, the, the installations, they're called thought catches and that's what I was just saying, you know, I do them in a large scale as a sculpture. But so these are things, so I've been painting these cubes in my work for a very long time and they're like thought catchers to me but you know to be able to then call them that and then people understanding the relationship so within a painting they're basically representing the individual or the self in in within a work so they're like a person they're like they may be me or they may not do you know what I mean um, and the next sculpture that I'm going to do actually is these see these triangles the pyramids, so I'm working, I'm got work, making a sculpture at the moment, which is also, so they're um, called five point portals. And then these things, the tri things, the triangles, these are three point portals. And so I've used them in a few of the different paintings and they um, basically, the works with those in are introspective and a person, like they're a personal work. Um, and, you know, as opposed to these ones, which are telling a, a bigger story, like they're telling a human story. Whereas the gridding and the flatness of these paintings, they're more like you're looking uh, above and you're looking down on work, whereas these are looking, you know, you're looking at an architecture, you know, you're looking at a, a view. So the patterned ones are meant to yeah. be, yeah, they're just another, they're like, they're going like a bird's eye view of the same ideas, if that makes sense. And I feel like for me, because there is diversity in the ideas and it take, takes time for people who are following my work to start to see the connectedness of all the work, even though visually some of them are quite different. Um, yeah, so the, yeah, so they're the three point portals and they are also the installation on the other side. It's interesting that like when you say that, because now you look at this painting and you imagine it, what yeah. is it, if it was flipped on its side, what yeah. would it look like? Yeah, exactly. And, you know, imagining the architectural forms that might yeah. be below. It's like looking at a maze, yeah. like, you know. it's great. Um, and so this one here is connect the dots. And so there's the large dot in the middle. And so this is like, you know, in life when you're like, oh, if I'd known that would happen, I wouldn't have worried, you know, like, you know, in an ideal world, it'd be really nice to go, actually, there's the dots to follow. Like, that would be, so that's the kind of maze and the connecting the dots and like the, in life, you can't see where the dots are. If you were in that, you can't see where the dots are. So you, if you're in, like I, and this is one reason why I'm loving doing the digital work because always when I'm painting my paintings, I'm imagining them moving or you're being in it or, and so the digital work is now giving me that ability to yeah. actually at, like, bring that work to life. But so yeah, this one is like a, a maze. Yeah. Um, yeah, so you can see where the dots are if you're looking down. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I think another thing that makes it such a cohesive show, aside from obviously that yeah. repetition of um, form and structure, is the color palette. Yeah. So do you, how do you go about that, do you, because you mix all your own colors. Yeah. So do you just mix them in volume and so you have all these works going well, at the I'm, same time? Look, I, or? No, the reality is I'm not very disciplined when it comes to mixing a show co color palette um, because every single painting then is asking me for a different, different thing, different yeah. thing, different thing. So um, I will, I have, I, I'm mixing for each painting and then I will look at a painting and think, oh, you need that, you need this and yeah. also, you know, so, 
Um, for example, the painting behind us, um, the Golden Shower, you know, I've used yellow in that, obviously for dynamic effect and the, the golden colour, but then that colour wasn't going to work in, in, in other works. So there's a, there's a little bit of yellow in this. But, so every painting kind of really asks for its own yeah. thing. I mean, when I'm working, I don't like, uh, well, actually, the, the, this painting here, and, which is the um, Meet Me in My Dreams, I'm, because what happened was I'm a very visual, like a very lucid dreamer. And, and because I'm painting all the time, like, I know it sounds crazy, but this one I saw in it, I saw, my, I saw it in a dream. And so I, when I woke up, I really quickly just got up and sketched it. And so this is like the muse, like meet me on dreams. But it's like, for me, it's, there's a lot of uh, power in my dream world that cont continually leaks into the work, you know, so. You know, these kind of, so that is like meet me on my dreams, meeting my, like meeting the muse or me, the idea coming from the dream uh, is, and the, actually the other one that I saw in a dream was uh, sleep under stars with me. <laughs> that was the other one that I quickly get up and I'm like, oh, I don't want to lose that idea. Um, so yeah, so the, you know, I think, I think when you work a lot, because I'm working all the time and I live and breathe my, my work, I'm just, just never ever short of an idea because uh, if anything, I just don't, I just have, I just love it. And I continually, I'll just stand in front of one and just draw something. So I don't, I don't, there's not a lot of planning. Yeah. Really none. <laughs> and so like, you, you for example, sketch. this one, I'm just like, I'm drawing up, I'm like, oh my God. So you're drawing straight on the yeah, canvas. Yeah, and I'm just like, oh, that's just works so well. Like, how did I even do that? Which sounds, you know, really egotistical, but I'm like, oh, I'm so like, ha that's, I'm just so happy that that just worked. Because I don't, I, I draw straight, I just, yeah. I just draw freehand on, on them all. Um, and I don't measure, like I, I use a ruler, but I don't measure, I use my eye. Um, so a lot of them will be slightly out, but if you look at a building or you're in a natural environment, everything is slightly out. You know, look at this building. Uh, um, uh, everything, a lot but do you know what I mean? And so, and so for me, I think when I was younger, the, the, my work was kind of cold and hard because I was always, it was always measured and it was always like measure, measure, measure. And it was when I just started lo like not worrying about just how, it, you know, for me, it's just got to look right. It doesn't have yeah, to, wow. it, do, it just has to look like you would be you know, like you can't measure for yeah. for the eye. So when you when you're drafting something like this on the canvas, is there many alterations as you go? Sometimes in, there's none. Wow. And sometimes there's sometimes some paintings are really like every now and then there's a painting that just I know it's going to be good because it's really irritating. Um, which. Uh, has this show's been pretty good actually? They've all just pretty much come out. So is the outline a painted line? So this is what, line, yeah. So this is, is so, so this is the other thing. So these are I I have raw linen, and then I use the gesso, and so all of this is so I paint the design in gesso first, and then add the colour. So all of this is the original linen line. Um, and that way, um, I, I feel like that also softens the work, but it, I mean, it takes a very long time to do it like that. So you're just using your so that's, brush So to... that's the pencil line pretty much. Yeah. I mean, I, I put, I do, if you follow me on Instagram and saying, I do do like the brushwork ones on Instagram because it like, it's super. Yeah. I've got to, you've got to be, um, you've got to be in a relax, you've got to just be chill. Like to be doing that brushwork for hours. You know, I'll spend, I'll spend, my daughter knows, like I come here, I'll be, I'll be here at six and I'll be there till 10 and she's like, are you coming home? Do you want food? <laughs> Come home, <laughs> we're going to bed. Um, so I, when I'm here, I just paint, I just paint. When I can, I have admin and other horrible things that need to be done. But, you know, I don't, I avoid even coming up here because I'll chat and waste yeah. an hour. Um, but yeah, so that's the, that's, um, and I think I know like, I know, uh, all of these little tiny things if you're I know you if there's anyone wants to be an artist but I like these things these tiny techniques that you start doing in the beginning and they feel like they're meaningless or they're just some random thing and then you're building and building and it starts to become a, like something that defines your work over time 
So people, if they look at any of my work, they'll see that that pencil line. I mean, when I first started, I used to paint back over this fine, remember Chris, I used to paint all these fine lines back over black. Mm. And then when I was like, I don't want to do that anymore. Mm. So, but it's always been about, you know, controlling the surface. Mm. Um, so yeah. That's, so, no, it's, no, so the raw linen is basically, so it's, there's, there, there is a really light pencil line, but basically it kind of, it, it disappears. Because when I'm bringing the paint up to the surface, it kind of dusts off and goes. But it is, it's just a pencil line. Um, yeah. So you must be an expert of brushes, of, you know, which brushes are best to achieve. Yeah, I'm, I'm an expert of what I do, and yeah. that's it. Like, yeah. I can't teach an art class because there's about five things I could teach you. Do you know what I mean? Because, because but do you know what I mean? Like, because I'm, I'm just, I've, I'm self-taught. I didn't go to, haven't studied. And so my experience is really specific to just what I want to do and what I do. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, for better or worse, it's just the way it is, so. The ones with I just, I just, I just, I just like literally do that. I just do the curves. I use my um, hand. I either my, I either use my elbow or my um, thing as the pivot point. Um, no, I meant like when you start this off. Yeah. Do you start in the middle with the, with the dome, or do you uh, start with a straight one? I just do whatever. I just do whatever. But this one, I did the dome first because I really wanted to do a dome. Yeah, right. And I wanted to have, I, I wanted to have this movement. Um, yeah, in the middle. Yeah, so this painting actually has um, the digital rights were bought by Melbourne Metro and so they have um, done, reworked with AR and so it's going to be at Flinders Street Station on a large scale and you'll be able to interact with it. And so, um, well, the reason I, I mean, I did this painting just to do it and then I was asked if I wanted to pitch something. But I had this, I was like, oh my God, I just, because I, I would love this painting, I don't know. And so all the elements in it uh, w move and do things. Wow. And you can interact with the whole painting. You can actually go into the perfect world. So, oh. uh, yeah, no, I'm just. Amazing. So, yeah, so that, that painting will be, it's going to be, uh, you know, the, the, the physical painting is still the, my physical painting, but the digital rights. Um, to that they bought yeah so it's really great yeah it'll be a really good thing like you're working though it's stunningly structured with, with the and your strength of color but i find it really exciting because it gives you so many opportunities to take yourself into other spaces. yeah well that's the idea it yeah so much freedom, yeah that's what I think. yeah I well, I mean, a lot of the feedback I get, because I, I do do, a, like, I really love doing big works and I do a number of them. And people always say that the, like these works in their houses are so calming, which is opposite what I expected because I do use a lot of colour. But instead, it, it's, they, it's always something that just draws them in. And that's the idea of, like, for me, that's why I paint. It's meditative and I feel really fortunate to be able to do it. And to be able to, like, extend that and people have something they can visually look at that's not a TV or a fish tank or whatever. And I'm my, so my grandmother was an artist and I grew up, we moved houses all the time and my parents just, we, you know, <coughs> we, we, I lived in Catherine, I lived in lots of places, but we always had these paintings of my grandmothers. And so for me too, I feel like I, my memories are of paintings in houses, not of anything else because we didn't really have a lot of stuff. Um, and so I feel like paintings in a house or in a, like they add to visual memory. Mm -hmm. So my children, like you would have, you know, like you might, you know, you have paintings that are part of your visual, you know, memory and, you know, a, a part of a kind of your, what your eye is drawn to or mm -hmm. appreciates. It takes you really anywhere in the world though. Yeah. Like, yeah, well, I've been, I have traveled, I have traveled a lot, the, you know, I, before, before COVID, I traveled, I went to, you know, 2019, I went to Ethiopia and yeah. London and Venice and, I mean, I've traveled a lot when I get the opportunity and so I felt like this whole, I mean, you need, I think when you're an artist, you're like, you're always collecting visual references yeah. and for me, I don't like lay things out, mm -hmm. but I, you do see 
I do see things affecting me. Actually, so these got, to say that, so these got shot, the installations got shot by a stylist who did these beautiful photos and she dropped these balls and I've got, and I printed one out and it's in my studio. And then after, cause I did all these balls in this series and I'm like, oh my God. So looking at that, cause I loved yeah, this image yeah. of the ball dropping down past, like that, and there you go. Like, and is that the first time those spheres yeah, came into it? Yeah, it's the oh, first wow. time I've ever put these balls into any show at, at all. But then I realized, that, and I thought, so that's like the, the you know, the, the, the power of visual things impacting you without you kind of realizing it. That's how you keep growing and going forward. Yeah, and, and that's why I see I don't, and I feel like by not controlling what, what content I'm doing, and you know, like it's not like I'm gonna do this and that, I'm open to just including yeah. what comes. But you really could have had that in COVID in your house. Yeah. Gone, oh, yeah. oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know yeah. What I mean? It's a, it's a, my work is there's a lot of escapism in it. Yeah. Really a lot. It's yeah. Really awesome. Yeah. 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 Has anyone got any other questions? Yeah. Yes, that's actually a really good question because obviously my, the things that concern me in my life, in my fairly narrow world and someone else's, the things that they would be concerned about are really different. But I feel like, I mean, the topics, the, it's just really, like this show, they're really fairly broad human concerns and like the one the sleep under stars is just that desire to get back to nature like in a perfect world we'd have so much more access to nature um, you know and I feel fortunate living out where I do one of the great things is all COVID I got to I hiked because I live near the bush or I mean I swim in the sea because that getting back to you know so that's the, the perfect world um, you know and in some ways it's like is it opting out to just imagine a perfect world? But I, you know, I'm still doing in my tiny way what I can to address the things I can. Obviously you can't change things like not living forever, or you can't change things like wanting to see ahead, <laughs> connecting the dots ahead. But we can work on, on having less gatekeepers and more equality and doing our bit to have that happen. Um, and we can work on, other things yeah oh yeah oh see i'm not re i haven't referenced this because it's right behind me well so, and that's the other thing that's a connection to nature one as well every night is a full moon because i don't know about you but when it's a full moon i always go outside and look at it and like oh it's beautiful what about all the other nights <laughs> you know like who cares about the moon on the other nights um so that's like also another yeah. another thing too you've got the perfect world and then you've got the, the perfect world looking at the moon and there might be people that are not in the perfect world well, one of the questions my little kids always ask me is, why don't you put people in them? You need to put people in there. And I, my youngest son asked me the other day and I was like, I don't know, I've never put people in because they just disturb the balance. I used to do these really, and Esther's like, and then my other daughter was like, but you used to do those weird love heart people. And I was like, yeah, actually that was a really weird phase. <laughs> but I did, I did used to do these um, shape, love heart shape people <laughs> it sounds terrible but they weren't too bad because they used to have an angle on them and um but <laughs> yeah but i got rid of the love heart people and all the people about a decade ago <laughs> so it's just a stillness i well, well i guess i guess in my work what i'm trying to um have is the balance between movement and stillness and so like, for example, this painting is, it's got movement, but it's also really still and serene and, and by having people in there, they just wouldn't work. <laughs> Do you think the topic of painting perfect world was even more, was that sort of COVID born? Like was it yes, 20, yes. 20? Yeah, because what do we, I mean, that's the thing, like we yeah. had, we had not just COVID, yeah. but we had, Bush you know, fires. the women's stuff and the Black mm. Lives Matter stuff. and continually and still now things are being thrown at us like how do we like what like and where our planet's going to run out of everything and it's like what like what are we what are we doing about it like and i i read um i've read sarah wilson's book which is um 
oh, what's it called? This is um, One Wild and Precious Life. And that's like, and that's the hark back to nature yeah. ones. And like, it's like, if you got one life, what do you, like what, and we've got one life, and we've really got one generation to really do something to fix things for future generations. So we don't just individually have one life. We kind of collectively as a, human body really only have one life to make differences to reverse some of the damage that we've done and that's um, you know that's another whole topic but that the painting the perfect world definitely was influenced by my like how like what is a perfect world like what do we change so that a perfect world isn't also damaging the world um, you know how do we see ourselves as consumers and all of those things yeah. like what's cool and what's not like yeah. you know so yeah that's answering your perfect world <laughs> question um yeah any other questions for jasmine <laughs> well thank you so much for coming yeah. and sharing not thank just you for now coming. but obviously yeah. this beautiful exhibition and yeah. it's just a joy to have it here and it still continues for another two yeah. weeks yeah. two weeks I should know oh, it's that. It's not even, is it, two, oh yeah, it's 16th of May, it um, comes down. So yeah, make sure that, you know, you bring people along to see it yeah. and enjoy it. Yeah, yeah. And, and one of the reasons I like, really love to do a show like this is because I think, you know, it's easy to do a lot of individual works or, uh, but the ability to tell a story in a space, um, for me, like for my practice, and to for people to be able to kind of get some of the ideas that I'm, that I'm, that I'm sharing like that's it's just been great yeah you know, I, um, yeah so thanks for coming along thank you very much for coming along <laughs>